Hey everybody, how are we doing? July 14th, Friday. It's Bastille Day. Viva la France. Let's get into it. Been away for a few days. Been running around the Capitol Hill. But here's what I am paying attention to today. The U.S. is about to announce investment restrictions into China. That is, the U.S. government is going to limit the ability of U.S. companies to decide how much money, what industries, what sectors they can invest in China. This is being done under the guise of national security. It's also a bit paternalistic. It's also a bit of uh, limiting resources, technology, and capital going into the Chinese Communist Party. Very interesting. We see more and more of the U.S. government looking for ways to reduce U.S. activity in China, whether it be trade, investment, sharing of tech. We had a hearing last night on Capitol Hill. We've had more and more talk from the Biden administration saying, subtly telling U.S. companies, discouraging them from investing in Chinese companies. This is all uh, super interesting, and it's going to become more and more front and center in U.S.-China relations. What's interesting, at the same time this is all going on, China's economy is clearly slowing from the data we've seen, and also there's been more and more, more, and more reports of the Chinese Communist Party pivoting back to being more entrepreneurial, reaching out to small businesses, and the ability to stimulate the economy. Overall, what's really interesting over the last 20 years is the amount of capital from the West, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, France, Germany, United States that's been poured into China to build them up, joint ventures, investing in infrastructure, investing in plants, opening B2C operations. This has all been going on. So a lot of money from the West has been pouring in there. Another interesting stat, last year, $100 billion FDI, foreign direct investment went to China. Last year, it was down to 20, so 80% drop because the business environment is not as friendly. The Communist Party is making it much more difficult. And domestic governments around the world are trying to lessen, encourage, lessen, damper the amount of money that their, their companies are investing in China. So story to watch. And as this is happening in Germany, the, uh, the German government uh, essentially released a multi-page report outlining how Berlin looks to lessen their dependence on China. This is much more around supply chains, being much more resilient, being much more uh, bringing stuff home as well. We've got a huge uh, same challenge we have here in the United States, right? How much stuff do we import from China? How many parts? How many components? How much uh, healthcare? How many uh, you know trinkets? Those kind of things. So having so much concentration on these supply chains, these kind of key parts, Germany's going down the same path. But at the same time, as you know, back in November, Schultz was one of the first Western leaders to meet with Xi following COVID, following his ascension to the third term as chairman of the party. And he took with him some huge heavy hitters, some big multinational German companies, companies like BASF that are investing over $10 million in a new chemical plant. So what you're seeing on both sides of the Atlantic is governments, domestic governments, trying to reduce, A, the resilience, the over-reliance on the supply chains that come out of China, and also trying to find ways to have their own companies invest more in their domestic markets. Today, as we talked about Bastille Day, our boy, Indra Modi, guess where he is? He's in Paris. Unbelievable. This guy was just in D.C. Now he's in Paris. Rolled out the red carpet. Macron, welcome Modi. Economic development, big celebration, front stage, uh, the biggest French celebration, national holiday. And, you know, this really solidifies that Modi and India are becoming the major geopolitical partner that the West is looking to over and over again. The last two stories, shifting away from China, pivoting to India, that is the story of 2023. ExxonMobil, I caught this story. They uh, just picked up a company for $5 billion, Denby. It's a uh, network of carbon dioxide pipelines that fits into carbon capture. So ExxonMobil pivoting away from producing carbon to taking on technology that captions carbon. Clean energy, uh, the thing that Exxon knows better than anybody is energy. And it makes total sense that they would try to get into the space, clean energy, green energy, carbon capture. They just bought this company for $5 billion. Speaking of a hero, this guy, Paddleball Paul, he is on a fight to stop pickleball in Central Park. What a hero. This guy, uh, Pickleball, is taking over the country. This guy, Paul Owens, he's out there. 
he has made it his goal to eradicate pickleball from the courts of New York City. I'm with him. Paddleball Paul, you're a hero. That's all we got for this weekend. Or that's all we got for Friday. We're taking the weekend off. We'll be back on Monday. Have a great relaxing weekend. Keep it real.